But there's more. Uh, first of all, we improve the relationships in Archimedes. Uh, and one of them is just a renaming of the used by relationship to serving. Um, used by was the only relationship that had a sort of a backwards name, a passive name, and that had to do with the direction of the relationship. Uh, it's very important that Archimedes relationships point in a certain direction, and especially for used by, there was sometimes some confusion around that. The idea is that this relationship points toward the, towards the user of a certain service, for example. That's different from languages like UML, which use the direction of a relationship also to indicate who is initiating the communication. But for enterprise architecture, it's much more relevant to denote who is actually the user of a certain service, regardless whether that service is offered proactively or reactively. And that's the reason that the relationship points in that direction, but the name used by was confusing. So it's now called serving a service or a, 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 an application component or anything else serves, uh, say, a business process or an actor or what have you. Then we slightly change the notation of influence. We uh, change the arrowhead because it's now more consistent with the access and serving relationships, and that ha also has to do with the structure of the set of relationships. Uh, those three are a kind of dependency relationships, and we wanted to reflect that in the notation. So it used to look more, um, much like the flow relationship, and that created some confusion. So we changed the error hat to make that a little clearer. And then, like you just saw before in one of the pictures, we changed the notation for assignment. Instead of having uh, these two black circles at both ends, we now show that it actually has a direction. And if you know the Standard, it has this big table at the back showing all the relationships, so you can see that it has a direction there, but the notation didn't show that. So we added this new notation. The old one will stay, uh, uh, well, we, we deprecated that as uh, in the standard. We, it, it will stay correct in Archimate for, uh, for a while, so in Archimate 3 you can still use the old notation. It's not becoming incorrect, uh, but I would advise you to use the new notation because it's and much clearer to see what is, the, is assigned to what. So you typically assign actor structure to behavior and, and actor structure to passive structure or actors to roles. So there is a, a directionality in there that was already there, but it's now shown in the notation. And then we have um, changed some other aspects of the relationships. We have relaxed the constraints between the different layers. It's, you can now have serving relationships, for example, between any layers. So the business layer, say people in the business layer, can provide services to the application layer. It's no longer just a, a bottom-up layering. It, it's much uh, more flexible. And another one that might uh, be important is that we allowed some relationships to other relationships. So you can associate objects with flows, for example. You can actually model that something flows from one say, application component to another, you can actually show that a certain data object is flowing there. And another important example is aggregation, so that you can aggregate relationships within plateaus or within a group, and I'll get to grouping later on as well. And then we improve the derivation of relationships, and that's a rather complicated subject. Um, you know from the standard, perhaps, that there's this story about how you can derive uh, relationships I don't want to go into too much detail there. I, uh, I advise you to read the, the standard there, but we improved on these, these properties as well. This is, uh, these are the two examples of relationships to relationships I want to show you. So on the left, you see that there is this insurance policy now related just with an association to this flow relationship between policy creation and policy management. So you now can actually, you can actually model what is flowing there. And on the right, you see that you can model which relations are part of a certain plateau. We couldn't do that, and that was quite a, a problem, because if you want to model that between two plateaus, uh, there is, say, an additional relationship implemented between, in this case, two application components, there's an additional flow, you couldn't model that. So we fixed that now, and you can have certain relationships with other relationships. So please re read the standard to find out what the exact specification of that is, you can't do this in all places, of course, that would create a huge mess. You wouldn't want to have, say, a relationship to a relationship between an object and another relationship. That would become uh, pretty complicated. But you can do uh, several things with this. Then we have added a, another kind of junction, the OR junction. We had the, uh, the, the regular junction, the black dot. Now we have an OR junction as well to denote 
a fork in the path of a process. So here we have in this example that you can either accept or reject a request. This provides you with a little more flexibility in model, modeling business processes. Uh, we do not want to duplicate BPMN in any way, so if you really have a need for uh, more detailed gateways or what, what have you, then please use BPMN. But this provides you with a little more detail on process models. We also added uh, the, the, the option to use junctions on more than just uh, triggering and flow relationships to denote explicitly that in this example on the right, sales and finance together realize invo invoicing. There was a confusion always about having a relationship, uh, having a realization relationship uh, from two different, say in this case, functions to a service. What does that mean? Do they, are they alternative realizations or do they jointly realize that? Using junction in this, in this way helps you express that explicitly. In this case, these two jointly implement realize invoicing. Then we have improved the grouping concept. Grouping used to be just a graphical thing, just a, a border around a few parts of your architecture, but it didn't have any relationship with what's in science now. And so it didn't mean anything. It was just a graphical thing. Now in argument three, it actually aggregates the stuff inside the group. So what you see on the right is equivalent to what you see on the left. And next to aggregating stuff inside the group, you can also re uh, relate things to a group. So you can draw relationships to and from the group, and there's an actual meaning to that. That's explained in the standard as well. Um, so there's an actual meaning to this realization relationship. These things inside the group together realize this service. Then there are some smaller changes. Um, location used to be in the business layer. Uh, that was a bit strange. Bus the location was used uh, across the entire uh, structure of ArcMate, across all the three layers. So we've moved it to a different position in uh, the set of concepts. For the user, that doesn't make much of a difference, but for the people implementing the standard or looking at the structure, th this might make uh, some difference. And we've also changed the relationship between location and what's on that location. Uh, it used to be assignment, but aggregation is a much more natural way of expressing this. So location now aggregates what's on that location. Assignment is still uh, valid in many places for this because it's a derived relationship, but I won't go into the details there. The regular way of doing that is like this, aggregating stuff uh, at a location. 